What's going on, guys? Uh, Yao Sports. My name is Scope and Shab. We're here with the Kansas City Royals episode two, and we're here at the mid-season report that I always do, and that's where I, <clears throat> I start out with the draft, and then uh, I kind of go to like the All-Star break and a little bit after the trade deadline, just uh, try to make some trades, and if not, just to see how we're doing. And uh, I always start out at the draft, and usually my draft strategy is that you know the the highest overall um, a potential player that I can find is usually the one I'll draft first. However, say this guy Jack Hood right here, say his potential was unlocked and it was B, and I had like an A potential guy that was like maybe like right here, I'd probably draft the B potential guy first, and then uh, if I can't find any anybody else, make sure I get the A potential guy just because I'm all about potential. That's the only thing I really say. <laughs> it seems like in these episodes, and I don't know if it gets annoying to you guys, but it is the main thing that I pay attention to, and it's really helped me with my success in rebuilding these franchises. So. Uh, we're going to go ahead and draft Felipe Ortega, who is a potential. And then, uh, see what else we got. I'll have a pick for a while. There we go. Yeah, the, the thing I didn't really like about drafting him, though, is that he was a first baseman, and, uh, I mean, I already got Eric Hosmer and Billy Butler. I don't know where I can put him, so... Uh, we could just wait till he gets like you know MLB ready and then just trade him or something. And I hate whenever I don't have anyone else uh, scouted out. I gotta make a blind pick. So we'll try to get a. Uh, I don't know. Look at this guy. He's got a really high hits per nine. I like that. Or well, decently high for a crappy guy. And then uh, let's just try to draft a catcher and hope we get lucky. <clears throat> and I'm going to have one more pick. And I'm just going to draft a random guy. I'm going to close my eyes and pick him. Trevor Friedman, left fielder. Okay. So let's see what we got out of this. Go to sign draft picks. Felipe A. This guy's a B. This guy's an F. F. D, great. I didn't get much uh, good out of this, so no big deal. Then I'll just sign these guys. Well, I'm going to draft it, or I'll sign this guy as well. But <laughs> I'll sign this guy. What the heck? Who cares? And let's move on. So, got a lot of time in between the draft and the trade deadline. <clears throat> you see, we're seven games out. We uh, we lost a few players' injuries. We lost Jeff Rancour. Um, I remember, I can't remember what, I, what, what happened to him, but. Gianna Giovatella, towards rotator cuff. He's a second baseman. Going on a bit of a wind streak right now. Never mind. I spoke too soon. But yeah, these mid these mid season uh, report things is basically I just try to make um, a trade for someone. Hopefully, I get lucky and make a big trade that really benefits me. But I don't think there's going to be any trading this time, just because uh, we're probably not going to be making the playoffs. Unless I can get like some starting pitching, but really the thing the thing I'm concerned with in this franchise is just developing all these prospects that I have because I have a ton of prospects. Yeah, Jake Odorizzi, Danny Duffy, Will Myers, uh, Bubba Starling. I'm sure there's way more. And then you got you got uh, Mike Wustakis and Hosmer and Butler, so. A lot of power in the middle of that lineup. You just need to kind of be able to hopefully surround them very soon with uh, some more people or more help around them. So, season home run derby. I might have someone. Yep, Eric Hosmer, 22 home runs. It's really good. Curtis Granderson, 28. I remember one time at the All Star break, uh, I had a, I had one where Mark Trumbo was already at 38. <laughs> Ridiculous. So I I usually go to about the 24th, 25th, and then I uh, I cut out, and then I go and look for some trades. Because uh, usually whenever I look for a trade, it takes about like 10 minutes, and it's just pointless because I just go around and tamper with different players and different combinations, and nothing ever happens. So. And all these notifications always get really annoying. Mike Montgomery, he's, he's another... Uh, Prospect I have. 
Alright, before I cut out though, I just want to go check out uh, my minor leagues though, to see what's going on with them. Like, er, uh, all, all the prospects that I have, so we'll go to double A. We'll go to, no, we'll go to class A first. Yeah, Jake Odorizzi and Chesler Cuthbert. I had a lot of trade requests with with him uh, a little bit ago before I started. John Lamb, that's another one. Bubba Starling. Triple A. Mike Montgomery, that's one. And Will Myers. So, yeah, we got about five or six really good prospects in the minor leagues. Plus, you got Eric Hosmer and Alex Gordon, who's 28. Billy Butler, Mike Moustakis, Jeff Francoeur, Salvador Perez. So, not not that bad. So, all right, I'm going to cut out here, and I'm going to go look for some trades, hopefully. But I'm not sure if we'll be able to get one, but we'll see. So, yeah, wish me luck, I guess. All right, so uh, here's the only trade that I'm going to be doing of the middle of the season and this is a really big trade I don't know why the Blue Jays would even want this at least they they really seem like they want it we got Colby Rasmus who will be a great addition to center field um, you know he's really needs a lot more time to grow even though uh, he does have a potential and he is 25 years old which you don't see that much from a lot of uh, 25 year olds who have that type of potential usually you'd see them around uh, at least B overall but Rasmus has a C right now but uh, I played a Blue Jays franchise a long time ago, actually like two or three months ago, and uh, he really can. He really somehow knows how to hit in like the number two spot in the lineup. That's where he was only good at. So um, I think once he gets, uh, once he progresses, he'll be really good at the top of the lineup. And uh, yeah, speeds at C right now, so it's not that bad. We also got Travis Darno, who will be uh, really good for the catching spot because we do have uh, Salvador Perez right now, but. Um, you know, I think, well, one, Darno's going to be uh, a better catcher than him because of, just because of the potential. But also, he's already has a better overall than him, so there's no no hurt in getting him right now. I would get Aaron Sebia, but he's injured, so I can't. And then uh, we're also just putting Jason Fraser, Fraser in there because uh, they'll still take the trade no matter what, and he'd be a good addition to the bullpen. And all we're giving up is Jonathan Sanchez. He's our best starter. He's having a pretty good year. 3.11 ERA, but there's no point in having him. Uh, it's his final year. Uh, we owe him 5.7. We won't have to pay that this year. And uh, by getting rid of him, because in the off season, out in the off season, I'd probably let him walk. But um, you know, I'd rather just you know get rid of him now instead of having to just you know let him go without it with without us getting a return. So go ahead with this trade, and we'll see what they say. My phone goes off. <laughs> it's the it's the GM from the other team. That's that's who just uh, texted me. Oh, he says the uh, that the trade has been accepted. All right, cool. Thank you, Blues Blue Jays GM. So we <laughs> we got our trade done, and uh, I have to fix my forty man roster. So let me do that real quick. Let's get rid of these two guys. We'll move from forty man roster. Bye. I usually release or uh, put down about two or three guys, just so I know I have like more room in the future. So remove from a 40-man roster. Actually, that guy was on the bench. <laughs> Whoops. Oh no, we're still fine. So, so let's see. We fixed the uh, lineups. Yeah, Rasmus is a little bit better than Lorenzo Kane. I like I like having Kane on a lot of my franchise scenes. It, it seems just because um he you know he's a really good hitter. Or, I mean, not not a really good hitter, but he has a lot of speed, so you can pinch hit him late in the game, uh, pinch run him, of course. <laughs> Why did I say sooner or something like that? I, I just forgot what I said. But uh, I can't wait till Moustak is when he uh, really progresses. Oh, he's at a C overall right now. And then uh, Travis Darno. Darno becomes a really, really big power hitter in a lot of my uh, franchises. He, he seems to be like leading the league in a lot of stats in a lot of the other franchises. So I'm gonna mess around with these a little bit more. See, this Escobar has a lot of speed for a shortstop, and I'm not gonna worry about the uh, no DH ones. Look, Rasmus hitting second. That's his natural position for me. We could actually have Escobar at the top because he has the best speed. I'm gonna do that actually. So. <clears throat> Middle of the lineup looks really great. 
just got to keep building pieces around him. Now, the thing that I didn't, that I was kind of worried about with that, uh, the trade, and I'm going to go show you guys real quick. I, you know, I was thinking, I was like, this is going to be a good trade because now we'll have Alex Gordon, Jeff Rancor, and Colby Rasmus in the outfield. And, and then I realized that, uh, we have a lot of, or we have a few more prospects. So, um, in a few years, Let's see, we'll have Will Myers, who will be overtaking Jeff Francoeur. So that means that we'll have Jeff Francoeur, probably Colby Rasmus, assuming, assuming I re-sign him, and Alex Gordon. There's also Bubba Starling, who's actually more progressed than Will Myers. So what I may do once Bubba Starling is MLB ready, I'll probably move him over to right field, trade away Jeff Francoeur. As soon as Will Myers is ready, get rid of Alex Gordon and his $14.4 million contract, I guess. And, uh... We'll have a good outfield. Or I can just, uh, nah, yeah, I think I'd, I'd trade Alex Gordon if uh, he was on the bench. So don't want to waste all that money. But all right, I'm going to simulate the rest of the deadline and look at waivers real quick, see if we can get a retarded waiver claim. I also need to call up a pitcher. I just I don't remember that, but I don't really care right now. I'm not going to stop the episode and redo that. Oh. All right, let's see who we got to release. Release this guy. This guy, and this guy, and this guy. Just to make sure we stay under the 90 for a while. A lot of, a lot of, <laughs> a lot of big overalls here in Class A. It's weird. All right, let's go to the deadline now. Oh, no one offers me any trades. I got, I got all my trade requests back in like April. All right, let's go take a look at waivers. We got uh, Francisco Rodriguez. Let's place a claim on him. Got a big overall. Ubaldo. <laughs> you never get these, but you might as well just put them in anyways and hope you get them. And, uh, Carrie Wood, you're not even in the MLB anymore. <laughs> David Ortiz as well. What if I got all those guys? That'd be, that'd be insane. That's good enough. Move a few more days. Don't think I got any of them. Nope. Damn. All right. So that's going to do it for me. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you guys come check out my channel. It's in the description most likely. And I'll see you guys soon in a week or two for episode uh, three. So thanks for watching, guys. Make sure you guys like the video, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later. You guys have a nice day.